Blue Jay fans, I just want to preface by saying I watched maybe about 20 pitches of this game today, and I apologize for that. I do. Because I was completely dialed into the Leaf game tonight, was stressing out to no end, and then I saw the score up and the Jays were down 4-1, or it was 2-0, and I was like, oh boy, with Cole Reagans on the hill, this might be tricky, and it was. The Toronto Blue Jays had four singles today, score one run, and lose 4-1 to the Royals. Right back to where this team was before yesterday. Now, did I expect that after a six-run outburst that we saw yesterday from the Blue Jays, that all of a sudden they'd be this great offensive team? No. (laughs) Let's be honest here. No. But I thought maybe, just maybe, that after seeing Cole Raggins in KC in that rainout game about a week ago, about a week ago, anyway, anyway, you might have a different approach and a plan at the plate, have an idea of what he wants to do against you, all this stuff. They had no, they had nothing. <laughs> Cole Reagan's win was at six and two thirds, four hits, one run, nine Ks and walk three. He battled his command right near the end. The Jays had some opportunities. They walked twice. No, hold on, it was an IKF single. So maybe they had two on, and could, I think in two out a couple different times, and they couldn't cash guys in. Bo had the RBI single, which was nice. Them ended a 2-1 game uh, in the bottom half of the sixth inning. But that was it offensively. Four singles for the Blue Jays. Michael Massey got the stor- scoring going in the top of the second with a two-run shot off of Jose Barrios. And then Bobby Witt, God, off of Eric Swanson. As much as Swanson has had an awful start to the season, that double from Bobby Witt, I mean, look where the ball is. That is absurd baseball from Bobby Witt Jr. Drives in uh, Mikael Garcia, and he gets an RBI double. Then Vinny Pasquantino hits an RBI double. I believe that was off of Cabrera. I could be wrong. But regardless, it wasn't great. And Eric Swanson continues to struggle. And then he went down 4-1 in the 8th, and you're like, yeah, this is curtains. They're not throwing scoring 3 in the 8th or ninth inning. It was over. And it was. Four singles, one run, and the offense continues to stink. Now, there are some pressing topics that we need to discuss. One is the biggest one for me, and that's George Springer. In his last three games, he's got eight strikeouts. He went 0 for 4 today with three Ks. He went 1 for 5 yesterday, and again, it was a bloop single with three Ks. And in the finale against the Dodgers, he had two punchouts. Eight strikeouts in three games. He's got an OBP now of under 300. And you look at his, where are we here? Uh, OPS, it was 642 going into play today. Isaiah Connor falefa going into play today had an OPS of 668, and he had a hit. So, George Springer has a lower OPS than, than IKF does. It's not good enough. And he's hitting your leadoff hole. So, at some point, that's got to change. Because I think we're at the point where George isn't good enough anymore. Really. You know, Vladdy had a line single, but also had a really awkward looking strikeout. Bo Bichette, I mean, I don't know. Look, like he was kind of feeling his back at times in the game, so it was kind of weary there. But uh, did go one for three with an RBI, I guess. Uh, did he walk once as well? Yeah, he got on base twice. Two of the four times he came to the dish. Justin Turner had a rough night, though. 0 for four, a couple strikeouts. Had a chance with two guys on. You think this is the guy you want at the plate? Couldn't get it done. Uh, David Schneider had a hit. He was one for four. Uh, IKF one for two with a run scored and walked one. So he did a fine job and that's it. Four hits, 11 strikeouts, walked three times, whatever. Your offense was irrelevant again today. (laughs) It just was. All right. And it's unfortunate because Jose Barrios was awesome. He was awesome again. Yeah. He gave him a two run shot to Michael Massey. Seven innings, five hits, two runs, three Ks, one walk. Didn't have the strikeout stuff, but five hits over seven innings was remarkable. He was great yet again. Gave your team a chance. Just your offense stinks so bad. That's just kind of where we're at here. Eric Swanson. Boy, even after all these outings he's had, he has an ERA of over 12. That's how bad it's been. Two thirds of an inning allowed. Two hits. Two runs. Both were earned. Hennessy Scobrera went a third of an inning allowed. One hit and nothing more. And Zach Pop, who just got recalled because Yariel Rodriguez hits the IL. I didn't see that coming, but there we are. He went an inning, a lot of the strikeout, nothing more. And with Yariel Rodriguez hitting the IL, the eyes moved to AAA Buffalo. And it's like a big dog named Alec Manoa had a feeling and saw that Yariel Rodriguez is hitting the IL. That means a spot in the rotation is open. And Alec Manoa 
puts on his best performance of the year and maybe even the best of, of the last year and a half. Like, really? I mean, not year and a half, but like, basically, all of his starts in the minors last year and all of his starts in the minors this year, by far his best outing. Six innings, allowed two hits, a solo home run, walked two, struck out 12. 12 guys. Where's the strikeout? Where's the strike to ball stuff? Where are we here? Uh, did he not hit anybody? Oh, I'm going to try and find the pitching stuff. Here we are. Uh, pitcher strikes. 92 pitches for Noah Manoa. 62 strikes. So a really good you know, ball to strike stuff. Did he hit anybody? I can't really tell that right now. I don't think so. He only walked two. Uh, he was great. Now, does that mean anything moving forward? Uh, we'll see. We'll see how the Blue Jays play it. But with Yariel Rodriguez going in the IL, it might force their hand a little bit or they go to a bullpen type of game with because now with Bowden Francis on the IL, you can't just put him out there. I'm very intrigued to see what the Blue Jays decide to do now. Um, right now, Zach Pop fine. The next, because they have an off day, so they can kind of manipulate enough that they don't have to worry about their fifth starter until May 7th. So we will see how that goes. Or May 7th is his decision day where he has to either be optioned or recalled. So I don't know what's going to happen. I'm intrigued to see, though. All right, so you know what, guys? That's going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and uh, uh, not the game because either you were tuned out of the game because of the Leaf game or you just tuned out because the team looked like crap, hit the like button. I do appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button. You guys not already. Comment down below. Thoughts on the video. Thoughts on the game. Would you like? Would you not like from today's game? For the Toronto Blue Jays, Twitter, Discord, Instagram, TikTok, all that stuff is down below. So follow up there if you haven't done so already. And I will talk to you guys. Leafs edition Thursday, game six. Leafs and Bruins at Scotiabank Arena as the Leafs look to find a way to force game seven. That's just where we're at right now. And as for the Toronto Blue Jays, they're back in action tomorrow at 3.07 as they take on Seth Lugo and the Kansas City Royals in the finale, looking to go 500 before their off day. Chris Bassett gets the ball for the Blue Jays. We'll see how it goes. Is Kirk going to catch Bassett or is Jansen going to catch him? Big thing for tomorrow. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and uh, not the game today because it kind of sucked. We'll talk to you guys then.